Hello everyone, welcome to my channel qtelf.com. The topic that we are going to discuss uh, today is graph. So why do we need to make a graph? What is graph? Basically, the purpose of the graph, it is to show the numerical facts in visual form so that they can be understood clearly and, uh, you know, easily and uh, much quickly. So these graphs are actually the visual representations of the data which is collected. Uh, so this data can also be presented in the form of a table, but we prefer to do it in a graphical representation as it is much easier to understand. So there are various types of graphs, but the first one that we're going to study today is a bar graph. So the bar graph, it is used to show the comparison among the categories. Like we can use two or more vertical um, uh, bar lines. The bar lines are represented by the rectangles, which you can see here. So these bar lines, they helps us to visualize um, uh, the data that we have. For example, let's see this one. So um, in different terms, like we have mentioned the terms on the x-axis. Now in a graph, if we have like, this graph so this line represents x-axis this represents a y-axis and we have zero here so this is the origin point we write what we are presenting by the x-axis here in this area and what we were what we are representing by the what uh, y-axis here and then we demonstrate like we write an arrow and this arrow tells that the value is positive and increasing in this direction fine so check this one. In different terms, we have different marks for mathematics subjects. So for the first term, we have 25. For second, we have 30. And for third, we have 45. Now we say, we read this. So in first term, we have, and we'll see the maximum distance that this bar graph goes. And it's still this value, which is 25. Similarly, for this second term and 30, and this is third term and 45. Now here in the second case, we represent uh, two values. So it represents the sales in kg for different fruits. So for mango, we have like for different days, we have different sales for different fruits. So it represents three quantities. Now let's see for Monday. So for Monday, we have the dark graph. So this is the one on the left. So for Monday, we have the values for mangoes, apples, orange, papaya, and banana. And similarly, for Tuesday, we have different values. And this way, we can compare that on these two days, when was the sale more? Like for which uh, fruit it was more? So for mango, it was more for Tuesday, for apple Tuesday, for orange Tuesday, for papaya, for both days it was same, and for banana, it was more on the Monday. So we can generally speaking say that on three days, the sale of the, um, uh, the sale on Tuesday was more for three fruits, and for one fruit, that is banana, the sale was higher on Monday. Second graph is a pie graph. So the pie graph is used to compare parts of a whole. And this whole is considered to be 100. So that is 100%. Now, this 100 is divided into uh, various segments. And these segments tell us the graph information. For example, out of entertainment, the 50% is entertainment. Sports is 25. News is 15. And informative is 10. If you'll add all these values, you'll get it as 100. And this is how we represent pie graph. Now, you, you shade it differently. And you can even make boxes here to tell that, uh, you know, this color defines informative. This color defines this and that and so on next is a graph which is a histogram so for histogram is a bar graph which shows the details uh, we show the details of the data in intervals like it has adjacent bars over the intervals so they are very closely attached unlike the bar graph that we have studied earlier for example, like we have weight 40 to 45, 45 to 50, 50 to 55 and so on. And we have number of persons. So the number of persons which have weight in this range, for example, 40 to 45 are 4 and 40 to 45 to 50 are 12. So what we do is we, you can see this line. Now what happens is that we have demonstrated that each of these two blocks, that means that each one block represents 2.5 kg but to show the data from 0 to 40 would be an unnecessary waste of the uh, bar uh, of this graph right so for that thing what we do is like we have our x-axis here the y-axis here and if my x-axis is starting from 40 so i don't need the starting values what i'll do is i'll just make 
something like this as exact thing and then you know i can start with my values so this actually shows that the data has been compressed here and there is no as such value for a uh, values from here till here so like there are no values from 0 to 40 and that is true as we can see in the table also now for 40 to 45 it is 4 for 45 to 50 it is 12 and for 40 uh, 50 to 55 it is 13 the intervals need to be same for the uh, graph while making it we need to be sure about it and we can choose it very wisely now let's continue the last one that we are going to study is line graph so this line graph it displays the data that changes continuously over the periods of time for example uh, let's say a person he fell sick and uh, his doctor maintained a record of the body temperature taken every 4 hours fine so for 4 hours what i have done is that uh, 6 am to 10 am we have 4 then 2 pm then 6 pm so for every 4 hours now we have to represent in the form of a graph and this graph is a time temperature graph so first you mention the x axis what it demonstrates and then the y y axis and then you put the name as graph so let's see the um, tabular representation this is this one so what i'll do is um, since the temperature is starting from 37 so for the y axis we can have a zigzag line here and the temperature for every block i have taken it as 2 so 2 4 6 that is why we didn't have any uh, zigzag line for the x axis so the horizontal line is usually called the x axis this will show the time at which the temperatures were recorded and y will show the temperature of the person um i hope this graph is clear to you what we do is for 6 am my temperature is 37 so i'll just put a dot here for 10 let me take a different pen so that it's much clearer to you so at 10 we have 37 that we can see from uh, this thing now what we do is we put a small dot for the value and then we circle it that is how you represent it fine for 10 we have 40 for 30 uh, for 2 pm we have 38 for 6 pm we have 35 and after putting all the dots you connect the center lines like if i had two dots like this and i made a circle so i'll be connecting the center line with a straight line and so on and so forth and thus i'll have a line graph now how do you um, like uh, think that how do you undermine that what will be on the x axis and what will be on the y axis so the x axis determines determines the independent variable like we represent the independent variable on the x axis and the determine uh, dependent variable on the y axis now uh, you'll say that uh, how do you identify the uh, dependent and the independent variable so let me just make this now the dependent variables are the one which depends on something as the name suggests and the independent variables are on which which does not depend on any word or anything like that so you just need to put the independent variable here and the replace these red words with the data on the table so let me just put it first like this if it sounds right to you then it's right so uh, initially i'll say that the time in us so the time causes a change in distance and it is not possible that time could change uh, could i'll repeat i'm so sorry so uh, independent variable let's first assume that this is the independent variable so i'll begin with time causes a change in distance and it is not possible that in distance could cause a change in time is it correct yes because nothing can cause a change in time so my independent variable here would be time now let me tell you let me define it in some other way like i'll take my distance to be the independent variable this time so distance causes a change in time and it is not possible that time could cause a change in distance that is incorrect so uh, and usually uh, we write the time on the x axis because time is a constant and it continuously moves and it depends on nothing let's just do a quick um, uh, recap of this so this is my line graph on the top right you can see the scaling so the scaling tells you one unit so this one whole block this represents my one unit like this is a square as you can see and this one square is a one unit so my x axis of the square represents 1 hour and my y represents 30 kilometers that can be seen from here so you just put the value and the units which has been mentioned and similarly we have hours here and this represents one so the scaling is done first of all you need to make sure the scaling is done 
No, first initially you make the x axis, y axis, o coordinate x and y. After that, you just put in, you divide your um, scaling, you do the scaling. After you have done the scaling for both, you write what your x represents and what your y represents. Do not forget the arrow. After you have done all these things, you need to make sure that you write the scaling. So these are the basic things. Now I have put in this distance, uh, a time distance graph here. And now what I'll do next is, how do I did do this? So time is one, two, three, four. There is gap of uniform gap of one hour. So yes. Now distance is 30, 60, 90, 120. So there is a uniform graph. Students, you need to analyze that if there is not a uniform graph, you need to make sure that the graph represents a uniform distance. That is the major point here. Now I'll find the slope. So how do you find the slope? Slope is actually the interval of the y-axis divided by the interval of the x-axis. Now the slope can be taken for any value, like any. Here I have given it for ABC. What you do is you draw a straight line from A, like a perpendicular, and then from C, another perpendicular. And this way you'll have a triangle ABC. So for the slope, you will have y-axis, that is AB, divided by the x-axis, that is BC. So the value of AB is this 30. And for BC, I have this 1 hour. That is how I'll get my 30 kilometer per hour. Let's just reject. So for example, if I take it for this one, just above here, I'll write this as M, I'll write this as N. So my slope would be MN divided by AN. MN is again 30 kilometer, AN is again one hour, and I'll get my answer is 30 kilometer per hour. So for this type of graph where the line is an oblique straight line, I'll get my slope fixed for each and every interval. Fine, I hope this is clear to you. Let's just summarize what we have learned today. So we have learned about four types of graphs, pie graph, pie chart graph, bar graph, line graph, and a histogram. So uh, um, for motion chapter, we will be focusing on the line graph. So line graph has x-axis, which has independent variable, and y-axis, which has dependent variable on it. To find the slope, we'll take the interval of the y-axis and divide it by the intervals of the x-axis. I hope the concept is clear to you. If it is not, please do write your queries in the comment section. I'll be too much happy to entertain them. Also, please do check out our other videos related to this. Next, we will be doing the distance time graph and then the speed time graph. Hope uh, you're connected with us and uh, uh, do like our page and do subscribe it, please. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.